Okay, continuing with the rebuild, we've got the uh, bearing race out of the front casing and we've recovered the shim. Now this is the vital part. This is the original part we're going to use to re-shim up. Right, so I actually took the front bearing out on the nose cone there to make life a lot easier. New bearing race fitted and underneath that is your shim, okay? I will say with these housings, if a new bearing race just drops in and it spins, then the housing itself is a defunct and you need a new one. On the main part of the casing, the bearing race fitted will be fitted one millimeter below the face. Okay, they recommend using a feeler gauge, what is obviously too thick to use. So instead we use something like a um, tire depth gauge, and we'll have a look, and that is about one millimeter. Okay, the reason for that is you have a step on the rear housing here, okay? Now I think that measures at about a mil and a half, something like that. When you fit the rear housing, because we don't need to remove it once it's been fitted, make sure that if you're gonna use silicon, keep it with silicon, otherwise use a gasket, but don't interchange. Right, so this is bolted up and the bolts have been torqued. Just as a precautionary, just make sure that each one of the bolt heads comes through no further than what you can see there. Otherwise, that will catch on the gears and cause problems. Right, so we're ready to reassemble onto here. And I'm making sure that the splines have got some lube in. And also the bearing track on the back will have a drop of gear oil as well. Okay, it's okay dropping oil in there now because it's only going to drip out a little bit. Bearings will need oiling. Make sure that you drop the oil on there and run it through the bearing first of all. Make sure there's a fair bit of lube on these bearings. Now, apologies, it's a little bit blurred. Right, basically on the selector, you're going to have to fit that, so make sure there's oil there. It fits this way round. A little bit of oil where the detents will be. I'm just making sure there's more oil on this. One thing you don't want to do is have this touch the bench or have any dust blow onto it at this point. Right, so we're going to put this now into the main casing making sure that the selector is going to fit in its selector hole and the bearing's going to sit on the bearing race at the back there, okay? Now, that's fitted in and that's nice and snug. It should be okay. The rear housing you don't have to remove again, so once that's in and it's sitting nicely, we can then go ahead and put the front casing on. Right, so the front casing or the front nose cone or the uh, diff lock housing, whichever you want to call it. Basically, just remember I've lubed the bearing here and I'm also using a gasket on this gearbox. If you're using silicon at this point, you do not need to. But if you have a gasket, because it's thicker, you'll have to make sure it's in place while you're shimming this up. Now, I've bolted it down with four bolts down to the correct torque, first of all. And I'm going to check to see how much end float there is on the gear. Now it's sitting in between the two races. Now, I don't know if you can see that at that point. That's actually got quite a bit of movement, or what appears to be quite a bit of movement. You can see the lift on there. That's loose between the two bearing races. So we have to make sure that we shim it up and the preload is correct. This actually feels really nice and smooth and it's running free, but if it was in a vehicle, that would bang like hell. Okay, I'll just show you here the top bearing, okay, or the front bearing, the movement on here. Now we have to measure this to see how much we've got. We can then add a preload to it as well. Right, so I'm having to use a bracket for a dial gauge, which is available from Paddock. And of course, the dog gauge will not fit in here. So, best thing to use is this part which comes out of the front nose cone anyway. So, setting up our dial gauge, I've got videos on how to do this. Basically, you zero it in and then you check to see how much lift there is. Okay, that will be the end float, as it were, without any preload. Okay, so lifting it up and watching. <laughs> 
you'll see here that we're on about 0.02 of a millimeter okay 0.20 millimeters I'll write that down so we do not forget it okay so next thing to do is to remove the casing again the front part nose cone and then we're going to have to take the bearing race out and put another shim in it okay so you can see why this is stripped down it's the ease of being able to do the job right i'll get the main casing out of the way now and then we'll concentrate on shimming this up yes the bearing race has to be knocked out okay so be prepared to do this you can see the two slots here that's where your punch goes okay right so this shim here was the original that we took out of the box and we can measure it with our micrometer right just as a point of fact here you go this is how much dust has been picked up off the bench surface even after it's been clean okay so be warned of this just make sure your components are spotless right so the micrometer you should always check it to make sure it's zeroed in using the thimble on the end it should always come to zero if not there's a special spanner for adjusting it to reset to zero the higher the quality the micrometer the better the reading Right, so our shim kit we have for the center diff and we have for the input gears. Two different shim packs. Right, so we're going to use the center diff ones on the, from this shim kit. Okay, so I'm going to find a shim to add. And remembering our end float was 0 0.20 millimeter. I want to also add a preload of about 0 0.05 of a millimeter. Okay, so I'm looking for a shim that's about 0 0.25 of a mil. And luckily in this kit, there are some thin shims. If you can't find the right shim just to add, then you'll have to use a mathematical equation, work out what your original shim was, and then find two that will make up the extra. Right, so the shim can go back in there. There's two of them there, and the race knocked back down into place. After then, okay, you can see that that's now been shimmed up by 0 0.25 of a millimeter. Okay, so that's taking up the slack and adding a little bit of preload. Again, we're going to have to go through the process here. If your calculations are right and you've checked it right, then it should work out very well straight away. So I'm going to bolt this down and then torque up four of the bolts. That's good enough. And then we can recheck it. Right, so it's bolted down and there's no lift here. Okay, so that's okay. It's smooth moving. There's hardly any resistance at all. So you should be happy with yourself. And this is a little bit of joy that something has been set up properly and done very, very quickly. So a little dance, away we go, done. Right, okay, so we have a smooth moving component here. And now what I'm gonna do is take the front housing off. I'm now gonna build it back up and then fit it properly and torque all the bolts down. That is about it. You won't change the end flow or the preload now unless you put a thicker gasket in. If you're using silicon, then squirt some silicon in and then clamp it up. That will push out and fill up only the tiniest of spaces. Okay, so the gasket here I greased earlier and it's not damaged, luckily. Okay, it shouldn't be if you're careful with it. Right, also you have a uh, dowel which is just here. Make sure it's in when you reassemble the front casing for the last time. Right, so that's all bolted down, that's shimmed up. We can go ahead and rebuild the rest of the gearbox. You can see here by the bearings that we've uh, changed that it is quite intensive work, but worthwhile. 